G'day. Second uh, video for the for making up the uh, the tapping arm. Um, this one, in the first video, I made up the, the the base and the arm. This one, I'm making up the arm and the bit that holds the tap. So starting off with the um, the bracket that goes onto that uh, that knuckle. Uh, one of the things I will be doing though is a couple of people um, comment on the Volstro head and how's it work and all that sort of thing. So the first bit of this video is actually uh, me taking the Volstro head apart because I needed to uh, to do some repairs on it, uh, but uh, took you along for that one as well. The last video where I used the Volstro head, a number of people said, well, how's it work? What's it, what's it like inside? Now, last time I used this, um, there was a bit of a bit of a rattle inside and so uh, I'm about to use it again so I thought right I better fix this up uh, and what had happened is a, a nut had come free so uh, that's not difficult to fix and I'll put a bit of Loctite on there but how it works is like this the spindle feeds up through a bevel gear here to another bevel gear there and There's a spline shaft which goes through the middle of that, this one, and that then transfers the power down to the to the collet chuck. Uh, there's a there's a, a gib strip that runs along there. So when you wind the screw, all that's happening is that spline is sliding in and out of that gear, and uh, so that's how it's varying the the uh, the distance. Rotation is, is very simple, it's just a, a, a ring gear with a, um, a worm on the side and so that's just what turns it round. So it's, it's pretty simple in its um, construction. It's like a lot of these things though, the devil is in the detail. Uh, so for example, you know, a lot of these bearings are actually needle roller bearings. Um, there's a needle roller in there and there's a few there, there's some up here. Uh, that's the that's the end plate, and once again, need a roller bearing. So it's quite well made, um, but it does need a bit of maintenance every so often, and now is one of those times. Here's my clevis blank after I've used the, uh, the Volstra head to put the, the round on there. I had a ball nose cutter in there and that's, that's nicely put a, a bit of a fillet in there. And then I've stepped out a little bit and come in with a straight cutter. Uh, I need to do a little bit of filing and, and uh, smoothing and all that sort of thing on this. Uh, same thing on the other end but um, deeper because that's, that's the way it is. And I'll, I'll round off some corners and, and smooth things out. There's a few little burrs where I haven't quite cleaned up. Uh, I think there's something wrong with the Volstro head. I, I think that uh, it might be due for some new bearings or something like that because it uh, wasn't happy towards the end there and that could explain why it was uh, throwing nuts off with all the vibration and things but that's, uh, that's my issue um, so I have to, have to have a look at that. Anyway that'll clean up uh, and, that, and then I'll come along once I've, I've, I've got the outside shape roughly where I want it. I'll come out and cut that piece out and that'll give me a, a clevis. Uh, on the back here, on a casting, I, I just put a, a spigot on there. Uh, here I'll just weld a piece of, of stuff straight on there and, uh, and go from there. Here's my pseudo casting after a little bit of work with uh, a file and some emery and a bit of rounding off and all that sort of thing. And uh, as you can see, it looks a lot more casting like. These holes here, eventually I'm going to be cutting through there to leave myself a sort of basically a four millimeter flange through here. Uh, lighten the whole thing up and make it into a proper clevis. But before I, I do that cut, what I want to do is, is get a piece of tube here, weld that on, and uh, once that's welded I can then finish off a few corners here and cut that out. I don't, want, I don't particularly want to weld it uh, with it cut out because it may distort it slightly. So I'm hoping that uh, by leaving that bit in there, 
um, and then letting it you know cool slowly uh, it'll it'll basically uh, look after itself I'm about to clean up inside here that needs to be 62 for everything to fit uh, and so that's not such a, a terrible thing I want to bring these flanges down to about four millimeters I've got some holes there that I'm that I'm aiming for um, this is possibly one of the more I won't say dodgy because it's not dodgy as such as just just um, stress inducing setups I've done for a while because that clamp only just clears my scribe line there so I've got a long series cutter here uh, I'm going to be coming in I'm hopefully not picking up on the one two three block uh, and can come along and clean that up this is on here because I wanted to get that welded on before I, I took the material out in case it distorted um, I'm not sure it might be a mistake the uh, the worlds are a little bit lumpier than I'd like them and I'm just trying to I'm still trying to work out how best to to use this and where to cut it off so we'll, we'll just have to see about that one Now that I've thinned these uh, webs down, and they're not they're not too bad. There's a there's this one's a little bit over, and this one's a little bit under. Um, so I didn't quite get my uh, my corner holes in the right spot. I want to put a hole through here. The top hole here is going to be a diameter 10 to to suit the shoulder bolt. The bottom has to be tapped for an M8. So what I've done is I've got this in the vise. I've squared this up. I found the center of the, the the boss here and that'll have to have to have to do I've also got a jack in here because I'm a bit concerned that if I apply too much pressure here this might bend give me a crooked hole all that sort of thing so I'll go down here with a tapping drill and I think I've got one that'll just reach long enough and so I can put that hole in there and then I'll come back here and take that hole out to the to diameter 10 uh, that that one doesn't matter quite so much uh, but I do want those two holes aligned, so I'm better off doing them in the one setup like that. This has changed since last time you saw it. I did have a round piece of tube welded on here, but I decided I, I didn't like that because I, I was going to need to put a bracket on there, and that would have meant welding something extra on the tube, so I, I didn't uh, do that in the end. The end piece is done the same way, it's, that's actually a lump of stainless with a round spigot on it. I've put that into a hole in there with some Loctite and then some, some roll pins just to, to lock that in place so that's not going any, anywhere. Um, by putting this on here I've, I've, I've been able to round the edge there so that's nice. When I welded this on I, I was a bit concerned that I was going to get this moving so I put the bolt in there uh, to stop it moving that way and then I put a, a, um, a machinist jack in there to stop it moving that way and that seems to have uh, worked. You may be looking at this and wondering what on earth I'm doing and I must admit I'm wondering that a little bit myself. However, the whole idea here is that I've got my shoulder bolt going through here and I want to get a v-groove in this block down here that's parallel to that and so what I'm doing, I've got a V block there, I've got uh, a one, two, three block there, and so I'm basically locating that by that bolt. I've run a, a dial down the side there to make sure that's parallel. I've got two clamps here which are basically just providing a, a, a location that way. Uh, they're, not, they're not clamping down as such. And then this one here, I've got a stack of washers uh, and I've got a clamp with a round uh, pin on the on the end there and I'm just using that to hold down and that's all that's doing is securing this so I can come in with a cutter and put a put a groove V groove in there to hold the, the, the shaft of the tap. I'm about to make up the latch that uh, is used to hold the, the tap in and this is a bit of 5mm thick stainless and it needs to come down to 45 so I'm, I'm just going to do that now. 
I've got a set of parallels here. Uh, they're a Starrett set, and they're actually made in Scotland. Scotland uh, Starrett has a factory in Scotland, and they used to make uh, this sort of stuff. And inside here, I've got a list of, of the of the thickness was uh, sorry of the distances between the top of the vice and the top of the parallel. So these ones here, the tallest ones, there's six millimeters between that and the top of the parallel. So if I want to machine something less than six millimeters thick, this is no good. What I did was I got a bit of just a bit of plain, you know, hot rolled mild steel, and I've machined that off parallel. And so I've now got a set of parallels which go to three millimeters. The other day when I was looking at these things, I noticed I'd taken a nick out of the uh, the steel there. Now I'd always thought these things were were um, you know special steel and hardened and all that sort of thing, but it looks like they are just. Um, you know, a prob probably a, a low carbon or medium carbon steel. Nothing terribly special, certainly not heat treated because, you know, otherwise I wouldn't be able to do that to it. What that means though, is that if you've always wanted a set of parallels for your mill, but haven't been able to, uh, um, you know, go for the, for, the, for the cost of them and all that sort of stuff, uh, and these were a, a set through eBay, a um, bit of mild steel will probably do the job just fine. You just got to be careful that um, you know you get those two sides parallel. Here's my blank. Um, I um, once I had the thing the right thickness, I just sort of nibbled away with the angle grinder there, cleaned that up with the milling cutter, and then used a file for the rest of this. Uh, the profile doesn't have to be precise. It just needs to be you know something like that. One thing it is handy to know is the radii of your files. Um, so this one, which is my largest half round, is a 25. This one is a, uh, what is it, 19. And this one is a 16. And so what that means is if, if, if you've got certain radii that you're trying to, to get, or inside diameters, you can just, um, you know, if you have the right size file, you can just file away and that'll actually give you your your uh, diameter. Uh, in this particular case that was a, an R24 and that's a, a diameter 25 so I had to do a little bit of extra work but just something to to work uh, to know. To attach this to the arm here uh, I need a bracket that looks like that. Uh, pretty straightforward to make. There is one trick and I'll show you that in a minute but that'll just screw on there and once that's screwed on, that just sits in there. I've got a bolt that's too long just to uh, to locate there. And you can see that the action there is is uh, fine. That'll just pinch the, um, the the shank of the tap and hold that there. So all I now need to do is put something in here that will keep that pressure on, and I'm pretty much done. This is the final piece, um, you saw this, this being made up. I've welded a, a, a piece of flat on there and then I've, I've got a spring in here with the, with the pivot and the idea behind that is I can push that and take a tap in and out. Uh, and that's because I want to be able to start a tap and then remove this to be able to get further depth or, or, or something like that with it. This is really a bit of a sort of a, you know, try it and see sort of solution. Um, it's, it's the, what I wanted to be able to do, but the other possibility is that I was thinking, if okay, maybe tapping a thread in, in the, the, the web of this um, beam here and running a screw through and holding it in place with a screw. So it's gonna be a bit of a trial and error thing, that just to work out how well that, that holds. Uh, the movement between having a sort of an M3 tap in there and this one, which is a, what, an M16, uh, is not an enormous amount. It's only about five millimeters or so. So, the, so a stiff spring uh, will do that quite nicely. Just to hold the bottom of that spring or to hold the spring full stop, in the bottom here, I've just put a, a, an M4 bolt uh, through with a nut and that just gives me a little spigot for the end of the spring to sit on and on the back of the uh, the lever here I've got a, a hole uh, eight millimeters diameter which is around about the diameter of the spring and uh, that'll just just hold it so that the spring doesn't decide to you know shoot off somewhere 
what I wanted to do with this setup was basically be able to drill a hole and then without touching that in the vise, swing in my tapping arm to tap that. Now, the collars that I made up in the previous episode, I've got one of those set and so as you can see the, the, the bottom of that is, is there and that just means that uh, you know I swing this away, I bring it back, I'm not going to be crashing into the side of the vise. So that's, that's what that collar is doing, it's doing it quite nicely. I can still lift that up, so that's all good. What I've got here is a, that's a, a, a diameter 5 hole, um, which I did on the mill here. M6 tap, so I can just grab that like that, pick that up, centre it. Now I haven't got any way of locking this in place and I don't want to because I want that tap to be able to find its, its centre. So all I'm using this for really is as a, as a guide to make sure that that is, you know, basically square. And I can feel that picking up right now. For tapping an aluminium I use a spot of, of uh, WD-40, even though the bottle says CRC. Right. That tap's now started in the hole and it should be good. So now I can come along and squeeze that, move my arm out of the way and get full access to the tapping. For flat things like this, doesn't worry me quite so much, but if I've got a round uh, thing and I want to put a tap in, a, a tapped hole in the side, then this will certainly help me start square. And yeah, I guess you could use it for, for reams if you wanted to, um, to position a ream and all that sort of thing. As I said, it, is, it, it does float and you can adjust the height. So it's really just a matter of finding a good position for it and going from there. But because I'm not removing this from the vise, the tap is square to the, to the, um, the table, as is the hole. Shouldn't have any drunken threads. My effort to show how square this was in situ, uh, when I looked at it while editing, I thought, mm, that's not all that flash, really. So what I've done is I've got the same bit of um, aluminium that I, I um, tapped. Uh, I've taken the burrs off because that was one of the reasons the square didn't look like it was sitting right. Uh, but I've put the M6 bottoming tap I've got in there and I've just got my little square here. And you can see that that is actually quite nicely square. So yes, it will tap square. So thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you for the next one.